From pirates to icebergs, the dangers cruise ships face and how they overcome them on a large and luxurious cruise ship, there is a dream vacation for many people. This giant cruise ship is like a floating city, having various facilities such as restaurants, Broadway shows, casinos, bars, swimming pools, and rides on its deck. The ship can accommodate up to 7,000 people and offers various travel routes that allow passengers to explore interesting tourist destinations around the world. Cruise ships are safe, safer than airplanes, trains, and cars, but this does not mean that the ship is completely free from all the things that can happen during a voyage. At certain times, the crew must face various threats during the uncertain sea voyage, ranging from bad weather to the threat of sea pirates, which can turn a dream vacation into a nightmare. One of the common challenges faced by civilian ships is piracy. The most famous piracy incident was the hijacking of the Seaborne Spirit cruise ship in 2005 while traveling through Somalia's waters. Two armed ships fired shots at the Spirit about 160 kilometers off the Somali coast. The passengers became terrified, and the crew rushed to the top deck. After some time, the pirates were able to catch up with the Spirit and change its course. The captain maneuvered to avoid the pirates and attempted to create waves to steal the pirates' return. As the pirates attempted to approach the ship, some passengers captured the moment through the window, and they could be seen swinging RPGs in the video while the pirates' machine guns fired 30 RPG rounds at the ship's hull. It caught fire, but luckily the 10,000-ton ship only suffered minor damage, and all 151 passengers survived without injury. Finally, the pirates retreated after the ship's crew drove them away using a special cruise ship sonic device. The method of deterring pirate attacks varies depending on the situation and certain conditions. Some cruise ships are equipped with security equipment and systems that can be used to reduce the risk of pirate attacks, such as radar detection devices that can detect nearby ships. For close-range pirate defense, water cannons are used. This method has been used for years to prevent pirates from approaching ships. The powerful water jet is enough to flood or disturb small pirate ships. Even if they can still approach the ship, the strong current of water will make it difficult for them to board. There are also long-range acoustic devices like the ones used on the spirit ship that emit high-pitched sounds to keep pirates away from the ship. Additionally, cruise ships can take preventive measures such as avoiding identified hazardous areas, coordinating with authorities and other ships passing through the area, and providing security training to the crew and passengers. Some cruise ships also have special security teams that can take defensive action if pirate attacks occur, such as using firearms or evacuation techniques. Another real threat to cruise ships is bad weather. One of the worst incidents that ever happened was the evacuation of the Viking Sky in 2019, a luxury cruise ship with a capacity of around 900 passengers, which was sailing through a strong storm in Norway when waves as high as 25 meters hit the ship. The strong waves caused the oil pump to break and automatically shut down all the engines. Without the harsh sea stabilization, the ship swayed from side to side, causing everything inside to move. This was a very scary experience for the passengers. The ship also lost control, causing it to quickly head towards the shore. To overcome this, the crew released both anchors to prevent the ship from running aground, but it only made the ship sway worse than before. Eventually, the ship called for help and ordered the evacuation of the passengers. In this condition, releasing the lifeboats was very difficult due to the rough sea conditions. The Norwegian rescue team sent six helicopters to evacuate the passengers one by one by lifting them from the ship. In a matter of hours, more than half of the passengers were successfully evacuated in 30 helicopter flights. Fortunately, after the wind and waves subsided, the heavy ship engine worked again, and the ship was pulled into port, and all the passengers managed to safely exit the ship. Fire also posed a major danger on cruise ships. Fires on a cruise ship can occur for several reasons, including negligence by passengers smoking in prohibited areas, fires in the ship's kitchen, and fires in the ship's engine room. To overcome this, all modern cruise ships are equipped with complete firefighting equipment. However, some older cruise ships are known to have the potential for fires in the ship's engine room. Although it may seem frightening, most incidents like this can be quickly handled so that the ship can continue its journey as planned. In some cases, extinguishing the fire may take longer, as happened on the Carnival Triumph ship, which was stranded at sea for five days without functioning toilets and limited power. Cruise ships also sail in icy waters, especially in the Arctic and Antarctic regions. In icy waters, ships must always be vigilant against icebergs, which may appear small but can actually conceal a large iceberg that can cause serious damage to the bottom of the ship such as cracking or perforating the ship's structure and triggering leaks. Even a collision with a medium-sized iceberg can cause a ship to sink, as happened in the past to the legendary cruise ship Titanic on January 15, 1912. The ship sank after hitting an iceberg in the North Atlantic. The main cause was negligence and a lack of attention to the potential danger of icebergs during the planning and navigation of the ship. 
Other factors, such as bad weather, lack of communication, and cooperation between the crew and ship officials, also contributed to the situation, resulting in more than 1,500 people dying in the accident. In 2007, a similar incident occurred with the MV Explorer, a large polar expedition ship. The ship was on a two-week tour heading towards Antarctica when it suddenly hit a thick iceberg. The collision caused the ship's hull to leak and fill with water, and it began to sway. The captain decided to release all the lifeboats and abandon the ship. All passengers and crew were successfully evacuated and waited for about four hours until the rescue ship arrived to pick them up. Although the ship eventually sank, thanks to the captain's quick and decisive decision-making, all passengers survived without any injuries. However, even though the ship was operated with strict procedures and discipline, human error can still occur and cause serious problems that can cost lives. Errors in decision-making, procedures, communication, and operation are some of the most common mistakes, as witnessed on the Costa Concordia cruise ship on January 13, 2012. The ship set sail from Italy for a one-week vacation, but it made a sailing greeting on the isolated island of Giulia a few hours after the journey, indicating that the ship was about 250 meters from the island on an unplanned route. The captain purposefully questioned this because he wanted to impress his partner, who was also on the bridge at the time. Because of the captain's negligence, the ship collided with an underwater reef and immediately began to take on water. At that point, the captain gave contradictory orders to the crew while passengers began to gather in lifeboats to save themselves. The captain, on the other hand, appeared unconcerned and delayed launching the lifeboats for 15 minutes while the ship began to capsize. The captain finally decided to abandon ship after being forced to do so by the deputy captain. Most passengers managed to board the lifeboats and escape to the mainland, but some were still trapped inside the ship. More embarrassingly, the captain was one of the first to leave the ship and claimed that he accidentally fell into the Italian Coast Guard's rescue boat. The captain was later sentenced to 16 years in prison. This incident made it the worst cruise ship accident of this century. Of course, this is a terrible event, but on the other hand, we see the extraordinary courage of the crew members, except for the behavior of the captain. When we look at different modes of transportation, cruising still stands out as the safest option. Even in the worst case scenarios, cruising has fewer fatalities compared to other modes of transportation. For example, aviation accidents can result in the loss of hundreds of lives, whereas only a few of the worst cruise ship accidents have resulted in deaths. The death rate on a cruise ship, even in dire circumstances, is still very low. In fact, with billions of passengers in the cruise ship industry, the death rate has dropped to around 0.02. This is much lower than the death rate for commercial flights which is 0.07, trains which is 0.43, and car transportation which is 7.28. This means that driving a car is almost 400 times more deadly than sailing on a cruise ship. In conclusion, cruising remains one of the safest modes of transportation available to us today. Despite the rare, highly publicized incidents, statistics consistently show that the risk of harm or death while on a cruise ship is incredibly low. Compared to other common modes of transportation, such as flying or driving, cruising is actually much safer. So if you've been hesitant about taking a cruise due to safety concerns, rest assured that cruise lines take safety very seriously and have multiple measures in place to protect their passengers. With this knowledge, you can confidently plan your next cruise vacation and enjoy all the amazing experiences that cruising has to offer.